I'm gonna date myself, but this was a song I grew up listening to, and it's the first of the month by Bone Thugs and Harmony. The first line of, of the song goes, wake up, wake up, it's the first of the month. Grab your checks and come on. And the whole notion of this is, is that the first of the month is the number one day for expired listings. The reason is, is because most agents who list property put the expiration as the last day of the month, no matter what day they list it on. And so the first will always have the most amount of listings. So we talked about this in our first presentation. It's the easiest source of inventory, high reward. They're really intense, high competition. We have to bring energy. Your mindset absolutely matters. They will list right away and we have to get in the mindset of the seller. We talked about the half to sellers. We're always looking for death, divorce, debt, the job. And then I learned of a fifth one, which is diamonds. When someone gets married, they need to up, down, sell one property because they're moving in together. This is new. These are the different skills that we have to acquire in being a high powered outbound prospecting agent. And the first is our comfort and our maneuverability in the scripts. And what this means is, is that kind of in our example a couple seconds ago where we jumped into, well, what should your agent have done? Well, that's a question and that's maneuverability in the script. Jumping to parts of the script when it deems valid for the conversation. Because the script isn't supposed to go, where are you moving to? How soon would you like to be there? What's important about moving there? How did you pick the last agent? What price do you want? Like it's, it's not about going down, it's about dancing. It's about the ballet. And so your comfort and your ability to go to question two, to question six, to question three, to question nine, and have it flow in a conversation takes a lot longer than you think it will <laughs> to get to that point. So I encourage you guys to write out the dialogues, chant, the dialogues, which means read them out loud. Role play by reading the dialogue. I, I, in my office here, I catch agents who, who are newer in the business role playing off the top of their head. And I'm like, it makes no sense because what you're doing isn't working and yet you're just trying to wing it. Just read it. Just read it like a robot. And then in six, nine, 12, 18 months from now, you're gonna sound like a machine. You're gonna sound like a, like a master because you put in the time, not that you put in the time winging it. So that's one of the most important things of this equation is you don't run a marathon on your second day of getting running shoes. Stretch, walk in the shoes walk and run, then run, then do workouts, then do strength workouts. Like you process into a marathon. So treat your career the same way, put the time in. The next skill is time blocking. If it's not on your schedule, it doesn't exist. Like that's a skill y'all. <laughs> like your ability to say, hey, I, can't do this because it's in my schedule to do something else. Time blocking is a skill and it takes time to truly embrace it and execute it. Getting consistent with speaking to a certain amount of people every day, that becomes a skill. Hey, I will not leave the office until I hit 20 conversations. I will not take a day off until I hit 100 conversations for the week. That's consistency with contacts and understanding that this becomes a numbers game. It's simply math. And I'm gonna explain the math in a couple minutes. The fourth skill is tracking your numbers. Like that's a skill in itself because one of, the, one of my favorite parts of this business is coaching real estate agents who wanna bring a massive amount of emotion into our coaching sessions. Oh my God, it's so tough. Okay, what's tough? 
Well, I, I went on so many appointments and nothing happened. Okay, well, how many appointments did you go on? So many. Okay, hold on. So how many people did you speak to and how many appointments did you go on? A lot. Well, if we know what the numbers are, we can coach to the numbers. Because if you are went on two appointments and you're telling me a certain result or you went on 20 appointments, we can gauge a track record. We can gauge what the tracking tells us. Because the beautiful part of our industry is the simplicity of it. That realtors lie, numbers don't. And so if we say, okay, I worked five days this week, I spoke to 100 people, I went on five appointments, and I took two listings, awesome. The other part, I worked five days this week, I spoke to 20 people, I went on one appointment, and I got zero listings. Okay, both tell a story, and both stories are relevant and valid. But if we just go, I worked a lot, or oh, this is so tough, or they, they, you know, I, I don't know if I could do this. Well, when we track everything, we know specifically where we can help get more efficient. And I'm gonna talk about that in a couple minutes. Your ability to set appointments, which is your ability to handle objections, is vital. That's a skill. Your ability to handle objections and set appointments is different than your ability to stay consistent with setting contacts. It's different than your ability to track your numbers. So I want you guys to see that everything kind of stacks. And they're all skills which take practice. It takes time. The next is after you can set appointments, the next skill is your ability to qualify your appointments. It becomes a sixth sense. I can tell you that one of my greatest skill sets when I sold real estate was my ability to truly pre-qualify my appointments. And it was only because I got kicked out of so many houses based off of answering certain questions that I got a sixth sense of going, okay, when they say this, I gotta go deeper, or when they say that, I gotta get clarity, or hey, that's a warning sign. Let me dig on that warning sign. And I'm gonna go through what pre-qualify really means in a second. Your ability to take qualified listings is a skill, and you, that really wasn't important the last eight years, but it's gonna be really important going forward. Your ability to take qualified listings that is priced correctly or that the seller is willing to do price adjustments. If I get my price, I'll sell. You guys will learn isn't a qualified listing because you're going to pay money for pictures. You're going to spend time, energy communicating with the client. You're going to get offers. You're going to present offers and the seller is going to stonewall you. The next skill is your ability to get price adjustments. That skill wasn't necessary the last several years, but your ability to help a seller see the value of adjusting their price to meet the market's expectations, skill. Negotiations, win-win or no deal, like that's a skill. Your ability to keep everyone together is a skill. Your ability to help everyone feel that they got a good deal is a skill and it takes practice. And then the last is one that is the most painful skill to learn in our industry, bulletproofing. The reason it's the most painful is because you gotta learn it through the school of hard knocks. You have to have a lot of deals blow up, not close, for you to truly absorb what you could have done differently and then build systems around it so it doesn't happen again. Each one of these, skills that all take a lot of time. They take time, energy, and effort, but when you master these 10, this business becomes effortless. So I'm gonna dive into some of these now. This is what tracking numbers looks like. Contacts, appointments scheduled, appointments sat, home shown, listings taken, contracts written, homes sold, 
and then closings. How much money did we make? When tracking numbers, there are leading and lagging indicators. Contacts is a leading indicator for how many appointments you schedule. You can't schedule an appointment if you don't speak to somebody. Just like appointments set or scheduled is a leading indicator for appointments set. Listings taken is a leading indicator for homes sold. You guys see how it, it just, it's, it's cause and effect and they all tell a story. All right, these aren't the only numbers to track, yet this is a nice overview of leading and lagging indicators and the power of tracking your numbers, no matter how painful they are. I'll give you guys a, a quick example on this. I had an agent on my team who was averaging 150 to 200 contacts a week. She was a machine with zero appointments scheduled. And I'm talking for months. And so we would sit down every week going over her numbers and I'm like, look, you're doing the work. Just keep practicing your scripts. And after a couple months, the conversation became, it's not what you're saying, it's how you're saying it. Just give a crap about them. You're behaving like a machine, just show a bit of empathy. And then she started setting appointments. And then she worked to the next part, which was getting people to agree to work with her. And now she sells 50 homes a year on my real estate team, six years later. And so what I want you to hear in this is that when you track numbers, it removes all of the emotion. I'm working so hard. I speak to so many people. I'll give you another example of why tracking numbers is so important. I had an agent on my real estate team in 2016. He was in the business six months, didn't smell a deal. This guy was nowhere near any sort of flow of appointments or anything. He was the most coachable individual I have ever met. And he would do everything we asked him to do from the amount of conversations to the amount of role play to the amount of um, just ask for the order, handle objections, and he did it. And he put 12 deals together in his first three months on the team. So month six through month nine of him in the industry, because he was in the business six months before he joined the team. He put 12 deals under contract. Home sold was 12. Closed, two. You want to talk about frustration? The dude put 12 deals under contract and only closed two. He had 10 blow up. And so now I could have a logical conversation with him. Yo, you're doing the contacts. You're scheduling appointments. You're helping people agree to work with you, you're getting them to write contracts, and you're negotiating win-wins. I promise you just hit the bad luck. You just happened to do it at the very beginning of your career. Make no mistake, it happens to all of us. You close enough deals, you will find a period in your career where you just have nuclear bombs happen on transactions. To me, it happened in 2012. I had seven transactions in a row blow up. I knew, I know how to sell real estate, I track my numbers, I just hit that batch of bad luck. So I said it to him, I said, look, you're doing all the work, you're tracking your numbers, I promise you, you will never in your career have 10 deals out of 12 not close again, ever. And he closed 56 his first year in the business. Why? Because he tracked his numbers and we could stay in logic. We stayed in logic when he wanted to quit, <laughs> but he trusted the process and he closed 56 that 12 months, first year in the business, because we got past it staying in logic. All right, that's the power of the skill of tracking numbers. The other part of tracking numbers is you get ratios. 
like how many contacts per closing? How many contacts for someone to sit on an appointment with you? How many doors did you open versus how much money did you make? Like how powerful is this? Yo, every time I open up a door, I get paid $270. How fast can I go show more homes? And all we do is we take GCI and divide it by the amount of homes that you show. So this becomes the math of tracking numbers when it becomes fun. How about home shown versus contract written? Especially during this NAR settlement. Hey, with our system, the average buyer writes a contract after five homes. Just think of how much stress you save following a system like ours. Food for thought. Another reason why we want to track numbers so that we could duplicate our business. Here is a business plan where if we hit 520 contacts in a year at 60 contacts per appointment scheduled, that would be 92 appointments. If we convert at a 50% ratio, which means 50% of our people kick us out of the house, they don't even let us finish what we're going to say. We will take 46 listings. If 30% of our listings sell, which means we fail 70% of the time, we'll take 14, we'll, we'll close 14 units at $500,000, at 5 million in volume, which would be gross commission income of $150,000. Now, what's the number one? piece of this, the bottom, the conversations at a 60 to one ratio and then 50, 30, boom, average price point of 380. So again, this is the math of our industry, removing all of the noise and just reducing this industry to just math. The prequel script. So this is, um, from a long time ago and I went to an event and I broke down the prequel. And so I'll spend a good 10 minutes on this because I think it's that important. So if what I say makes sense and you feel comfortable and confident, comfortable and confident that I can sell your home, embedded command, sell your home. Are you planning to list your home, embedded command, with me, embedded command? When I come out tomorrow at four. Now, there's so many folks that I, that I have taught over the years that gave pushback on this. And I'd simply say, well, when you say it so casually, like, yo, what I say, mate, thanks for setting the appointment. May I ask you a couple questions? Yeah, of course. Hey, if what I say makes sense and you feel comfortable and confident that I can sell your home, are you planning to list your home with me when I come out tomorrow at four? So next, are you planning to interview more than one agent for the job of selling your home? Now we want to ask that because we want to know if you're going up against somebody because you don't want to go sign the contract and they go, Oh no, no, I have two more interviews. Like you need to know everything before going out on an appointment. Number three, tell me again, where are you moving to? Now you say, tell me again, because you asked it earlier while you were on the phone with them and how soon did you want to be there? So when I see you, how much do you want to list your home for realistically? List your home is an embedded command. Now five and number six are kind of in tandem. So the way I do, uh, did this is, so when I see you today at four, how much would you like to list your home for realistically? you would get a smart ass that would say, well, that's why I have you coming out or aren't you the professional or I don't want to say. So then you naturally go into the next part, which is 
<laughs> I can appreciate that. As a professional real estate agent, I study homes and prices every day. Therefore, I assume that you will list your home at a price that will cause your home to sell. Correct? And they're going to say yes. Then you go, so what price won't you go below? And they'll answer that one because you guided them. I'm a professional. I study homes every day. Therefore, I assume that you will list your home at a price that will cause it to sell. Correct? So what price won't you go below? And then they'll answer it. Now, what will you list your home for? What price won't you go below? Now we want to qualify. Whatever their answer is, well, how much do you owe on the property? Now we want to ask that question because we want to create a net sheet. We want to ask that question because we want to see how they came up with their price and what they're hoping to net. We're asking these questions because we're getting in the psychology of their head. We need to know what their pain points are and what their carrot is. Now, how much do you owe? Have you ever thought about selling it yourself? You don't ask that if they're a for sale by owner because they're already a for sale by owner. But you want to ask this, have you ever thought about selling it yourself? Because you don't want to get blindsided when you ask them to sign the contract. They're like, oh, at that price, we'll sell it ourselves. Like, you've got to get all this out so that you're prepared to handle the objections when they give them to you. So number eight is great for you to be the professional, which is, hey, will you help finance the home for the next buyer or do you want all your cash out? 99% of them will say, I want my cash out. Go, I don't blame you. Now, if they say, what does that mean? Well, it would be owner financing. And we can come up with whatever those terms might be that would make sense for you. I want to cover all the bases, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. I want to make sure that if you're considering holding a note, we can market the property accordingly. That's what that's for. Would you, this Number nine is the most important question. It's my favorite question. Will you please briefly describe the home to me? This is a story for another day, but Jeff, this is where you want to share the DISC assessment and have everyone understand the four personality styles. Because how somebody answers this most likely is their personality style, and then you can present your listing presentation to their style. So for example, will you please briefly describe your home to me? A driver might go, what do you need that information for? Or it's a three bedroom, two bath. Or it's a big house, I don't know. Where an expressive won't stop talking about their house and you're like, all right, all right, I said briefly, that was enough. <laughs> an amiable will talk about their feeling about uh, 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 feelings and emotions. Uh, they may talk about the schools, about uh, the neighbors. And then the um, analytical is going to tell you it is 1,792 square feet. And the lot is 126 by, like they're going to give you exact numbers to your briefly describe. And then you present based off of their personality style. Um, then I'll be sending a package of information. This is your, pre, your pre-listing packet. Do you have any questions? Whatever questions they have, you do not answer them right now. You ask, do you have any questions before I arrive? What's your commission? How long is your listing uh, period? Whatever their questions are, you write them down and you say, those will be the first things we talk about when I come out tomorrow at four. You do not get sucked into answering the questions online or over the phone. And then just so you know, our meeting could take anywhere between five and 25 minutes. Is that okay? And they're going to say, yes, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow at four. So when I, when I shared with you guys that number six, your ability to pre-qualify appointments is a skill. Is this making more sense now? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. And so when things happen in your listing presentation, you go back to your prequal and go, whoa, what did I miss? How did that come up and how can I use my prequal more effectively to solidify closing appointments when you're out there and becoming a machine?